127 verse 1 reads, Except the Lord builds a house, they that labor, labor in vain. Shall we invite the presence of the Lord uh, as we begin our building day? Our gracious, loving Father, we come before your throne of mercy this morning, thanking you for this time that you have afforded us unto us, that we hear more and learn more about your goodness. As we are going to be learning these various gems, may they apply in our lives, and may we be strengthened in our spiritual work. We pray all this in Christ's loving name. Amen. To introduce our day, we are going to, uh, I'm going to run through the 10 lessons that someone got as they were building. The 10 lessons that uh, someone uh, got to write down, they jotted down, that teach us about uh, good building. And uh, before I embark on that, maybe I may want to define the word building. What is building? Building is the act or the trade of constructing something. So the trade of or act of constructing something. So in construction, in, in whatever, I would then just uh, define, uh, give life another definition. Life is also a journey of just building. Be it in, a, in the different circles of life, you're building something each and every day that you, are, uh, that you are living. Be it in your character, be it a family, be it whatever. Whatever that you are doing is building or constructing something. And uh, this is very uh, an important work that all should be mindful that they are doing each and every day. And um, so I'll run through the 10 points uh, that someone, the 10 important lessons that someone de uh, derived from their building experience. And the first one is know what you are getting yourself into. Know what you're getting yourself into. Calculate the investment that you're going to beat, that monetary investment, the time, everything. Know what you want to do and uh, the things that you want to do. Then the second one is hiring the right people. I'm sure as a church you've hired uh, the right people, the building community that you've chosen for yourself. I think they are the right people to be doing that for you. And the third one is consider hiring a designer. Consider hiring a designer. Think about the furniture placement, the things that you want to place, even as you're building uh, characters, the things that the real character traits that you want to be in, in your child, you want to be in your life. Think about those things as you are still starting so that as you go on, those things may be reflected in everything. And uh, the fifth thing is important lesson is plan and the writer reiterates plan and plan you need to to really have a plan and i'm sure the building committee will share us the plan that they have uh with the church today and things uh the sixth one was things always look worse uh than they are at the end so they always look worse before but when they are finished, you always tend to appreciate uh, the final finish. Uh, you will make mistakes, but we are to learn from these mistakes. These mistakes are supposed to be stepping stones to our success. And the eighth one is communicate everything and do not assume. And the building committee has given us a platform. In the afternoon, there is going to be a, a service where we are going to be interacting with them on Zoom so that we may get to uh, comment on whatever plans that they are going to be presenting unto us, and we may also ask the questions that, are, that we may find in ourselves, asking ourselves after their presentations. Uh, and the ninth one, be kind to everyone involved in your building. Be kind to everyone involved in your building. And the tenth one, listen to professionals, but know when to trust your guts. Uh, listen to professionals and know when to trust your guts. Um, I will hand over for now so that you may listen to the uh, proceedings of the building uh, plan. Um, happy Sabbath, Church. Um, 
wherever you are viewing us from. Um, it's always good to be in the house of the Lord and to be able to share um, that which the Lord has tasked us to do. We are part of the building committee, myself and uh, El Dantini, and uh, many others that are, are not uh, on this discussion platform today. But um, I've been tasked with um, discussing why we need to build a church. So a while ago, Elder, I was reading an article uh, in the UK-based Guardian magazine, or Guardian newspaper, rather. Uh, and they were speaking about uh, the importance to preserve church buildings as they formed part of the British heritage. But um, a national agency had been set aside to raise funds um, to be able to do the work to preserve all these buildings. But this agency was under pressure from uh, detractors who felt there was no longer a place in modern do day society uh, to preserve uh, such buildings. Um, either they were turned into uh, other facilities for other use or they were destroyed um, and other uh, uses made for the land. I found this quite scary um, to say that in modern day society there is no uh, place for uh, places of worship and that places of worship were losing their relevance. Seemingly, that is. I, I deliberately say seemingly because I'm thinking of our current situation where we're having to worship online. And I'm asking myself, are there members of our present day community that think there is no place for um, places of worship? But let us remind each other why we need to have such facilities. Uh, first and foremost, a church uh, facilities are a place for believers to meet and hear the word of God. Um, we had a, a session a few weeks ago where church members at Mount Pleasant were discussing their online experience. And the one thing that came out quite clearly was that everyone missed human interaction. So we need a place to meet and to have this uh, human interaction. And for us to hear the word of God, as I said earlier. It's also a place where we can come for prayer and communion with God. I've had opportunity to come here during the week um, and just have some quiet time uh, in this very same uh, structure that we have here and to just pray and commune with God and how sweet that time was. It's also a place where we can fellowship with other believers and fellowship allows us for engagement, for people to discuss what they are going through in their lives, the help that they need, um, and for them to be able to extend help to others. If we are not meeting regularly or if we don't have a regular place to meet, we may lose on this opportunity to help each other grow in this faith. A church building or a, a church facility affords us to establish an identity. Um, if we were to worship in a rented place, we might even have difficulty putting up a sign that the Seventh-day Adventist Church worships here. But when we have our own facility, we can be identified. And if anyone is visiting in our area, they would be able to come and worship with us at this place. Uh, that, is, that is our own place. With our own place, we don't face um, challenges of being evicted or from moving from one place to another because the rented place that we are using can be used for other facilities or the owners um, may want to use it for, for something else. A church facility is the headquarters of our faith. It is a base or a command post from where we can launch our mission. Without a place where we can store our literature, where we can store um, the things that we need to use for our mission, or a base where we can meet and plan uh, what we need to do as part of our mission, this might be quite difficult to, to um, achieve. It is also a place where we can uh, host our extramural activities. Uh, imagine the weddings that we've had here. Imagine the famous Mount Pleasant potluck. Our club meetings. The sporting Sundays that we've had and so on and so on. We would be able to achieve these things if we had our own place which allows us to be able to engage in these activities. Part of the plan is for us to have a medical facility here. Not only will our members benefit from this facility, 
but the community around us will be able to also benefit from this facility and it can also be a place where the Adventist medical message can be seen in action. Last but not least, I think we owe it to future generations for us to have a place of worship and a place we call ourselves, uh, uh, we call our own. We owe it to the children that will come in the generations to come where they can also come and be with their friends and worship here. I picked up a scripture that really resonates with what we are trying to achieve here at Mount Pleasant. And it was the words of Solomon in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verses 7 to 10. And I will read the passage. And it says, Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, Whereas it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well in that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build the temple, but your son, who will come from your body, he shall build the temple for my name. So the Lord has fulfilled his word, which he spoke, and I have filled the position of my father David, and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and I have built the temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. How sweet it would be if the will of the current um, building committee, the, the ones for us and the ones that are to come, we will see the fulfillment of this facility. And how sweet it would be if the generation of Eshla or Takanai or Makomborero or that of Tatenda and Zinzi and Luandi, or even that of Kanyi and Tayana, Beki and Tembi, and the little ones after them would stand on this land and the dreams that we have of this facility have been accomplished and God's glory has been made manifest here at Mount Pleasant. How sweet that day would be. Elder, maybe you can share the plan so that the greater community can see the the dreams that those before us and that of those of us that are members of Mount Pleasant Church at the moment um, have dreamt for this place. Morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. We thank you, Winnie. I, I really, really feel challenged with what you've just said. The church is saying this year, I will go. What does that mean? In every sphere we are in, we must be going for God. So for us as a building committee and anyone who really feels they've, they've been sent by God to do something to build his house, we are saying, I will go to build. This is our theme. I will go to build. Now, I'll take time to just remind us of the main structure that we are going to be building. We are in a structure right now. This is not the end of the road. There is a main structure that we'll be building, a beautiful structure. The Bible teaches us that if we do not plan, we actually can fail. So there is a plan we have planned, and I'm going to be presenting uh, to all of us. And I want to really appeal to people here in Zimbabwe and in the diaspora today to use words like, lest we forget. You know, the idea of forgetting is a dangerous idea. Because you start by forgetting small things. You start by forgetting home the next time you don't come home frequently. You start by forgetting home the next time you forget the heavenly home. So lest we forget, uh, the first structure I'm showing is the main church on an aerial view. Beautiful construction. And some of us, the Madalas, the Gogos who are around this church, were part of drafting this plan. I've spoken about this before when I've said some are no longer with us. But it should worry all of us that if 
we have not built it yet and we continue to talk about it. We are trying to ensure, like you say, the, the young ones must continue to know that this will be done. Why should it be done? When we present a plan before God, it can never fail. So, just like you read, Winnie, about Solomon and David, I am glad that you read that passage because God says, I'm happy that it was in your heart. But you shall not build it. But he had to be speaking about it until David had. Then David had to build the most beautiful temple. So lest we forget, uh, this is the beautiful structure that God approved when we prayed. Lest we tarry. There is also a danger. If we do not forget, we remember but we do nothing. Lest we tarry. We sit, we think somebody else will do it. Or we sit, we think we'll do it tomorrow. Uh, they say tomorrow sometimes never comes. So lest we tarry uh, and hope that things will just happen. They will not just happen. God is speaking to us today through us here, through his spirit, that we cannot afford to tarry. We have to do what we promised God that we will do. I'm showing now the, 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 the same uh, church from a front view. Lest we are sidetracked. My dear friends, the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, can actually sidetrack us. I, I, I was speaking to the other elders, Elder Deda and others, when there was a, a window of opportunity when we, st we started saying, let's meet at church. If the elders were to be honest and tell you, there would be resistance not only here but in the world. But there's no resistance to go to the supermarkets where there are more crowds than at church. So lest we, si we be sidetracked, how are we sidetracked then? We think the supermarket is important to us because of the food. What about the food we are going to be getting here? So let's be careful about what can sidetrack us. These pictures will continue to be in our memories until reality dawns on us and we build this church. So I'm encouraging members and whoever is listening to me that we shall not be sidetracked by the cares of this world or pandemics or anything else. We shall continue to operate knowing that God is not sidetracked. God is real. God is there. And God is just waiting for us to take that first step to say we are ready to work. I think we did a typical example of that when uh, the restrictions were very heavy on us. We decided as a building committee, let's at least beautify the front of the church. And it was done. And if you didn't know, that was a lesson for us as a building committee. That while we think that the things can be done, let's try something. And it happened as if there was nothing to it. So we are emboldened. The question is, are you? Are you emboldened to walk this journey with us, walk this journey with God, and actually ensure that nothing sidetracks us, lest we lose hope? There's a danger with what we call time. Time can cause us to lose hope. When it takes long, it will take us to, uh, a, a lot of courage and uh, zeal to get back and say, I'll still do this. So there's a danger of losing hope in this journey. As I speak about this, look at the beauty of this church. I've seen individuals who own houses maybe bigger than this church. How they do it, I don't want to know. But I'm talking of an entire community. People that have been empowered by God locally and internationally. Who would struggle to build one house? God's house. So I'm encouraging you, brothers and sisters, that it is possible. We cannot and we dare not lose that hope. As we move from the church, the main church, we want us to remember that we still have committed to God to build a medical facility. Oh, haven't we seen the need for it? Haven't we seen the need for it with what's happening in the world? Where people were being told they don't, there's no bed capacity. Those who needed oxygen. Those who needed to be on ventilators. 
those who needed to even go to hospitals just for general staff in health. What as a, does our conscience say? When God gave us the land to put this structure, we could have been ready. I will submit that we could have been ready. When the pandemic hits, we could have been ready for this. Our own people, even in the church, have had to struggle where to go in these difficult times. So what we are showing there is the prototype of the medical facility. It's work in progress. Uh, it will still change as we talk to doctors and see how they want to, 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 to have a facility that is user friendly. But the dream for this medical center must live. We don't know where life takes us uh, as individuals, but those that will remain, those that will be there, the dream must continue and be brought to reality. And we believe that Mount Pleasant will do this through its uh, locals and the people in the diaspora. This dream has never been forsaken and should never be forsaken. You know, I talk to my daughters, I talk to young people, and sometimes they laugh. They say, do you know what grade I was in at school when you started talking about these things? You know, God is working in us. It doesn't matter whether they were at kindergarten. What matters is it will be seen through whether it's the generation of David, whether it's our generation, I pray to God that it will be our generation so that the young ones will be challenged with greater things for God when they look at these buildings and actually say we can do more. We still believe one day the center of medical excellence will stand on this very site. And always let's remember, it starts with God. God is above any pandemic we can think about. God is above the cares of this world. God is above the finances we can think about. God is about, is about using people so that we gain experience of what can, God can do through us. That point. Because God can just do what he wants on the stand and everything is done. But God is trying to use us to ensure that we experience something when he has used us. And I'm encouraging everybody, whoever is listening, that God is waiting to use you. He's waiting to use me. We believe that this vision at Mount Pleasant will be fulfilled one day. We believe that it will be fulfilled by you. You who is listening to me. We believe that you will fulfill this vision. I want to move to the church project, project the costing. I will not go through the stages. This is on the screen right now. But let me just give you the total estimate. First, before I talk of the total estimate, we're not going to build a house uh, without expertise. We're going to use engineers, we're going to use electrical engineers and everyone. I like what Daryl said, that use the professionals as much as you can, but leave room for your gut feeling. Can I change the gut feeling to God feeling? You, or use both? Because God will tell us what to do when we have a problem. I want to move on after the three million you have seen. And that's USD. Yes, that's USD. A lot of people might be shocked. How are we going to raise this money? I want to talk of the strategy of funding. And we've decided to just come up with one. One. We'll, we'll have more. But we'll come up with one. Just to show you and encourage you as you encourage ourselves in the building committee, that it is possible. We are thinking of doing a network uh, which has one purpose, to build God's house and the medical facility. We aim to mobilize 1,000 members. We are saying the minimum is 1,000 members. Generally, in a church, you'd have more than 300 members. That's one church. But every year, people leave church and they go to the diaspora and so forth. That's another 300 and another 300, and it keeps going like that. And they, they sit in powerful positions wherever they are. And we are saying one member, wherever you are, just mobilize 20 people. If you were to have a function at your house, normally you have more than 20 people. So we are saying 
it's not hard for a human being to have 20 friends. It's the simplest of things to do. So mobilize 20 people. And then, starting with you, contribute $10 per month. 10 USD per month. Those who can contribute less, contribute less. But the network then must be bigger. So $10, and then you are looking at 1,000 members, each one with 20 people, that's 20,000 people. If you have $10 and you do this for 15 months, faithfully every month, you have $3 million. You don't need to go to a bank and ask for money. Because the banks don't seem to have that type of money anymore. <laughs> but God's people will be blessed enough to have $10 a month. I am challenging. I don't want to mention names. I'm tempted to. I'm challenging our former students. I'm challenging you in the diaspora. I'm challenging you. Sit down today and speak to God. Tell God that he has not given you $10. Then God will give you $10. Let me assume he has not given you. God will give you the $10 per month. And then also tell God that I don't have 20 friends. God will give you 20 friends who can contribute $10 per month. If you do it faithfully, we'll have this network of 1,000 members. In 15 months, we'll have $3 million. And we'll build that main structure. Once we're encouraged that way, we'll be able to move on and build the medical facility because we know where the money is. We know how it's going to be done. Let me just share an experience we've had in the building committee. One lady listened to one of our programs, a building program here. She's in the UK. Uh, we have checked with her. We can mention her name. She's okay with it. She only allows us to mention this name to encourage everyone else in the diaspora and locally. This is a lady who lost her husband in a terrible, horrific car accident. Uh, Mrs. Chengeta. She committed when she had that pro program. She didn't know how much the husband had played a part in the designing of our church. She only knew after that program. She committed to mobilize funds. She did a GoFundMe. I'll let members know and anyone listening to us. This happened late last year when we did that program. She has already raised USD 6,805.59 USD dollars. That's one person. But we've just spoken of ten dollars. We spoken of ten dollars per person and twenty friends. Here is one person who has not gone on this network, but has formed her own network. And she has raised this. She was assuring us when we spoke to her for permission to use her name for God's work. She said, Please use it. Uh, and she says, Let me assure you, our target of ten their target is ten thousand dollars. Our target of $10,000 will be met. They are above half already. Will be met. Here is the good news. That money has already been sent. So we are not talking of someone who is saying, uh, I owe you. We are talking of someone who has sent the money already. It's in our account now. We can start doing some work in this church of building. So I, I'm saying this not to praise uh, uh, Mrs. Chengeta. But I'm saying this to motivate somebody today. To know that it is possible. Then we've got um, the issue that when you look at God, when he wants to send people to do something, you will call sometimes the Godhead. Let me just refer you as I meditate on this verse, Isaiah 6 verse 8. God says, Isaiah says, Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Let's stop there for a moment. Why does God use plural, who will go for us? Because God is saying, when I send you, you will get difficulties of even going. When I send you, you will have people that will doubt. When I send you, you will have people that will tarry, lose hope, that will not want to know that they have to do this. So God says, 
I'm calling on the Godhead to say we want to appoint someone who can go for us. You probably are that person who is being appointed to do so, to build this house. So God is saying to each one of us, who will go for us, the entire Godhead, and do this work. So it's not the building committee that is going to be sending people. It is God himself. And I like what Isaiah says. He says, then said I, here am I, send me. Will you faithfully go to build? Will you faithfully go to build? Will you answer this call and say, here am I, send me? I've spoken about the medical facility. I've spoken about the church. I want to move quickly towards some conclusion. Let me remind anyone listening that we have the experience that God has led us before. We sit in a church today. There's a guest house on this premises. There's a school, a beautiful primary school, one of the best in this country, Northwood Adventist Primary School, being run by the church today, originating from this church. So I am not saying these things for us to feel big or to boast. I am saying these things to show that God, once we commit, God will do things for us. After all, we enjoy the facilities ourselves. So God has shown us that it is possible. Those who have not visited Northwood Adventist School, please visit and see. I think that whole structure, if you put it together, has probably used more materials than the building of the church. So it's very possible. Let me talk briefly about the current project. This church we sit in today still has to be completed. We are talking of now painting. We are talking of doing the back deck and the cry room for our children and mothers. We are talking about, uh, you know, the, 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 this area, the podium, where we still need to put the furnishing for the officers and do the podium properly. A, a, a better podium than we have. We are talking of church seats in this building. Those things need to be done. We are talking of um, the issue of also the air conditioning, which was donated, by the way. We just need to get it connected. So it's just the funding that we can, we can do this. Um, those who are watching these slides as they roll, you are seeing some of the course and some are written TPA to be advised. Uh, construction and doing of these things and finishing, you generally get that uh, you are looking at getting quotations, tenders, and so forth. So it does take time, but we, we, we will be able to be updating this as we go along. So far, those costs that we know to complete this building and uh, finish it properly, we are looking at about 26,334 for us to actually complete it and do, do these things without seats, which we will get uh, quotations for later. I want to end by just saying God is faithful. God will always be with us. God will always send us. God will be silent when he's not silent. God will trust us. The question is, can we trust God? May God bless us because God says blessed are they that do. May we be blessed for the rest of the day. Of the day. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer as we close this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Sabbath. We thank you for the Godhead who will decide sometimes to send human beings, and in most cases, showing faith in us. Teach us to also be faithful. As we reach out today to people that are in this country and people that are outside this country, Father, we pray for the presence of your spirit that you might speak to each one of us, starting with me. We pray, Father, that as we reach out, it is you that reaches out. Teach us to remember home and our ultimate home, which is heaven. Teach us to stay steadfast and to realize that when we've committed plans to you, Heavenly Father, you wait for us to fulfill those plans for us. We know, Father, you are faithful. 
and you know we know you have heard us. Father, where we have heard, forgive us, but we pray for your blessings. As we conclude this uh, period of discussion and presentation, we pray, Father, that indeed this church might be blessed and everyone who listen to us must be blessed today in your Sabbath day. For we have prayed in your loving name. Amen.